I have a question for you viewers. Do you know where martial arts comes from? I bet that you're thinking that the first obvious answer would be China. Well, guess what? You're wrong. They actually come from India. And it's all because of this one little guy named Bodhidharma. You see, the famous legend of Bodhidharma starts in the town of Chennai, India, where he is born as the third son of a very famous king, which is not yet known. However, Bodhidharma's life was not very good for being the son of a king. However, the reason that Bodhidharma had such a terrible life was from a very good reason. It was because when he was at the very young age of seven, he started practicing Buddhism. This greatly impressed his father and made him believe that he would be the one to take over the throne. However, this made his two older brothers feel jealous, so jealous in fact, that they even tried to kill him. The day that Bodhidharma's legend really started to kick off was when a female monk named Patanatara came to the castle to officially teach Bodhidharma about Buddhism. After a couple of years of training with Patanatara, Bodhidharma was given the status of monk and he could now be called Bodhidharma. These teachings did not last long, however, because Patanatara soon fell ill and was about to die at any given moment. With her last words to Bodhidharma, she said, go to China and teach the world about Buddha. And off was Bodhidharma, leaving behind his fame, his fortune, his family, and he would now live as a poor hermit. Bodhidharma is now tasked with the mission to spread an entire religion to one of the biggest countries in the world at the time. The first place that Bodhidharma thinks of going is the Shaolin Monastery, a monastery filled with old and weak Chinese men. Now this is the part where some of the researchers will start to disagree. Some believe that Bodhidharma took a boat and then walked to the rest of the way by foot. Others believed that he walked the entire way. Then, by chance, he ran into the emperor of China during the Ling Dynasty, Emperor Wu. The conversation that happened between them goes a little something like this. I am the emperor Wu. I have built temples and monasteries. How much merit have I earned? None, because they are only of temporal worth. Who do you think you are talking to the emperor like that? I do not know. Then Bodhidharma just walks out on the emperor after he said that. The day has come for the Indian to make his first mark in the legacy of China. He has already made it to the sacred Shaolin temple. He sees the abbot, aka the religious leader of the temple. Bodhidharma asks the abbot, can I study with you guys? The abbot says, No, absolutely not. Why would I? Now, Bodhidharma was out of options, so he comes up with something in his mind, and what he says next were these famous and inspiring words. Can I meditate in a cave for the next nine years until you accept me? Please, pretty please. Bodhidharma then goes off to a cave about two miles away from the temple. Then he meditated there for about seven years. However, it is said that he got so tired that he fell asleep at seven years. Then he woke up and got so angry with himself that he followed to cut off his own eyelids and meditate the rest of the years. Some believe that when his eyelids hit the ground, they became tea plants to help keep people awake. This is the reason why he is always shown with a wide-eyed glance in his paintings. After this, they finally accept the Indian into their resting place out of pure respect for him. He then shows them about how to practice his style of Buddhism meditation, using the locust style, a style where all body parts rest on another with only your right leg touching the ground. The monks started to like where Bodhidharma's ideas were going, 
so they decided to try out his new style of meditation. However, Bodhidharma was absolutely shocked to see them falling asleep only after an hour of simple meditation. And then after that is the moment that had started martial arts. Bodhidharma decided to show the monks moves that would help build their stamina and strength. He started off simple with a horse stance. A wide stance that acts like you're sitting in a chair for a very long period of time. Then he went to some simple forms like Bodhidharma's 18 fist. A form that would increase movement speed, stamina, and agility. So once they had that down, he made them do exercises that would start to make them look like superhumans. Then, out of the blue, Bodhidharma sadly died. It is a pain to know that the man who trained the most advanced fighters in the modern world died from a simple disease. Some say that after his death, they saw him carrying a shoe, but those are mostly just speculations and legend. Bodhidharma. He was the man who went from an Indian prince to poor hermit to the father of all martial arts. Now that we've finished the story, I will answer three questions that the viewer might have. Question one. I know you said that they are the best fighters in the world and go through the toughest training in the world. But some people like the Navy SEALs or even MMA fighters go through tougher stuff all the time. All I have to say to that is... This mountain is around 1,000 meters high. It takes an adult an hour and a half to climb to the top. These boys are required to climb it in 20 minutes. A master is reserved only for the elite of the elite. Biao <laughs> Zhao. There is still a chance of killing your opponent unintentionally. Use correctly. Parts of the body can become immune to scimitar or spear attack. The throat can resist attack by... The iron neck is very useful in... Question 2. What are the differences between Chan Buddhism, the Buddhism that Bodhidharma made, and regular Buddhism? That question is actually a very good one. That is because the two definitions are not clearly defined, but this is going to be my personal interpretation of the differences. The Buddhism style that was before Bodhidharma held the belief that life was endless and it will make you go through bad situations over and over again till you reach the path of enlightenment. And then the Chan or Zen style of Buddhism, the one that Bodhidharma offered, is the way to understand what life is directly without the action of logical thought or interpretations. Question number three. Why do I even need to know this if it doesn't affect me directly? The answer is that it probably should. If you do martial arts, then the obvious answer would be that they affect you because he made martial arts. If you practice Chen Buddhism, the obvious answer would be that they affect you because he made the religion. But if you don't do either of these, then you should start to meditate the way that Bodhidharma made. This is because the form of meditation made by Bodhidharma will do incredible things like decrease stress and anxiety while increasing awareness. Bodhidharma had a great triumph in the world, but it is sadly turning into a tragedy. This is because of martial arts schools in the martial arts community known as Mick Dojos. There are schools that will make profit by making their kids turn belts faster. It is a terrible thing to do because they make their students that are weak and not prepared to have belts of that level go into the world thinking that they are masters. And on top of all of that, they make Bodhidharma's great legacy look like a terrible disgrace. So that is why we must stand together to protect the legacy of our father of martial arts, so that his name does not die in vain. As Bodhidharma would say, all know the way, but few actually walk it. <laughs>